Hello and welcome, I'm Alex Gerijuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. Ukraine is continuing negotiations with the International Monetary Fund on a new cooperation program and looks forward to further consultations in Washington. This was stated by the head of the National Bank, Yaki Smoly, to comment on the development of Ukraine's economy and cooperation with the IMF. We welcome to the studio Dmitro Boyarchuk, Executive Director at CASE Ukraine. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Hello. So three months ago, um, I remember that Prime Minister Oleksiy Honcharuk stated that uh, this new three years long program on the cooperation with the IMF would be launched this December. Do you believe that this is possible? Unfortunately, it looks like that December is not uh, the month we will have this new agreement, uh, because uh, if uh, due to timing, if we are expected to have some wire or have some deal with the IMF, uh, then this visit that uh, from uh, November 14 to November 22nd, uh, it should have to deliver some re results, some positive results to us. Because, uh, you know, the procedure is the following, that we have IMF mission here in Kiev. Uh, then they deliver some conclusions. For instance, they recommend to approve a new deal with Ukraine and then it goes to chief of uh, of the fund mm -hmm. and they and they give and they approve this decision uh, since we have nothing so far uh, the MF mission left Kyiv and they uh, stated that uh, they uh, they have still constructive talks and constructive discussions it means that they f uh, feel that some problems are with uh, possible uh, cooperation it means uh -huh, that the some problems because the statement was pretty neutral and this can signal <laughs> that there are some problems in the negotiations with Ukraine I MF never Deli uh, tells any uh, strong messages. Uh, well, it so never messages directly, directly what is wrong. Yeah, yeah but, uh, you know, for, for this visit it was expected that the deal will be concluded. And they left uh, signaling that signal we do not have any deal so far. And what are the main stumbling blocks, in your opinion? The main problem is uh, related to Igor Kolomoisky, because when uh, IMF arrived to Kyiv, uh, actually, he made very strong intervention to Western media, uh, delivering very different controversial messages about that we will uh, not uh, borrow from the MF, we will borrow from Russia. Uh, and despite that the cabinet uh, have delivered many uh, very, very important and positive steps like approval of uh, law, on land reform, uh, unbundling for naftogaz gas, uh, and many other um, important steps, uh, which could be uh, truly called as reforms. Uh, you know, the noise around Kolomoisky was so strong that uh, it was difficult to, you know, to to move uh, to move forward with with this negotiation because Ukraine is currently in focus. Uh, in international media due to impeachment scandal, uh, mm -hmm. Ukraine gates, uh, it's called everywhere, and uh, it's difficult for IMF officials to maneuver uh, in this context. Because, uh, Between each, Ukrainian interest and the scandal in the United States. Uh, you know, everyone is watching that some oligarch who is believed to be like a puppet of our president, uh, he is saying that uh, he, will be, he will receive uh, back his, uh, his, his bank, bank soon, uh, that uh, he wants to cooperate with Russia. And they have a lot of questions. Let's just inform the audience, let's just remind the audience that we're talking now again about Ihor Kolomoisky and private bank that was nationalized. Uh, and uh, now, well, basically, as you said, Ihor Kolomoisky is advocating for uh, Ukraine developing relations with Russia. And uh, uh, he reassures that uh, he's going to have this bank back. But. On the other hand, uh, Prime Minister Alexei Hunjeruk stated that this is impossible, that private bank is nationalized and will not be returned to Ihor Kolomoisky, and also uh, the same messages we could hear from Volodymyr Zelensky. So from what I understand, these reassurances of Ukrainian authorities, they, um, they are not taken as a guarantee for the IMF mission. Is this Absolutely. Correct? Those messages are very weak. Uh, they seem very weak because uh, you know, uh, 
National Anti-Corruption Bureau started investigating different cases of abused funds in uh, bankrupt banks. We had arrest of uh, Alexei uh, Pesaruk, uh, there was arrested uh, head of Okorexim Bank. So they are investigating this story. It was on, on request against, again, to on request of uh, International Monetary Fund. They are interested why uh, what is happening with the, those money. Uh, but there is a big question, why nothing happens on the side of private bank? If uh, you are investigating uh, abuse, abused funds and private bank is one of the largest stories, uh, why uh, nothing happening there? Mm -hmm. uh, you Could you remind us what sum of money are we talking about? Five to six billion? Five from billion dollars. Five billion US dollars. Well, um, on November 22nd, right after the IMF mission left Ukraine, it became known that the Ukrainian authorities could could prohibit uh, the return of banks to honors at the legislative level. So this uh, uh, sounds like a condition that could potentially be put forward by the uh, IMF or maybe recommended by the, by the IMF. And of course, we understand that this concerns this case of uh, Mr. Kolomoisky, but uh, do you believe that this could be a solution for uh, Ukraine um, in order to somehow to soften this talks with the IMF? And do you believe that there could could be enough political will in order to uh, introduce such a legislation? You know, uh, at current stage, uh, the story is not about return of private bank at all. Uh, President Office already stated it openly that private bank will not be returned to previous owners. Uh, but the IMF uh, raises question of abused funds. They want to be to, to, to see those funds re returned and those cases investigated. Mm -hmm. So they that, need to that's see the point. The improvement of the judicial uh, reform and judicial to, system of Ukraine. Uh, yeah, and to, to say it openly, they simply want to make uh, Zelensky and new authorities to start working with uh, Kolomoisky and Bohalubo to return five billion dollars. I think it's very complicated politically for new authorities to deal with that. They're trying to distance from Kolomoisky. I'm not sure why, what is, uh, what is the reason why they are making these uh, moves uh, quite mildly, I would say, because uh, initially it, it sounded very strong that when uh, chief of staff of president's office gathered J7 ambassadors and said uh, that um, private bank will not be returned to previous owners. It was very good, very positive message. It was positively perceived, but you know, when Kolomoisky went to Western media and made a very loud uh, interview, he simply smashed everything what was uh, presented previously. Very polite, very mild messages from President Office. Uh, they are, they, they simply are very weak, mm -hmm. and that that is the reason. IMF officer could could not simply ignore this fact. And Mr. Kolomoisky simply derails uh, potential deal with the IMF. Mm -hmm. If there will be no response, quite strong, quite uh, you know, persuasive response from, from the authorities, I'm afraid uh, we might have problems of, of concluding this deal. So what you say is that Ukrainian authorities should be more decisive about the case of Mr. Kolomoisky. And I would like to clarify one thing for the audience. Well, it's obvious that Ukraine's cooperation with the IMF has a long story, and we all know that the better this cooperation is, the more attractive Ukraine looks in the eyes of foreign investors. But I would like to remind that 2015 deal was a record agreement, about 17 and a half billion US dollars, but Ukraine managed to receive only 9 billion US dollars in four trenches because Ukraine was very uh, problematic in fulfilling uh, the obligations it took before the IMF. And then before the deadline of this agreement, it was... Um, well, suspended and replaced by this uh, standby arrangement last year, last December, for 4 billion US dollars. And then Ukraine received only the first tranche of money, uh, 1.4 billion US dollars, and that's it. Again, there was this uh, pause. Um, so it looks 
to me like some kind of a role play where the IMF is a uh, demanding teacher for the reforms and changes around the country and Ukraine or Ukrainian authorities is some kind of a really bad and irresponsible student, excuse me. Uh, so I would like to ask, is Ukraine capable in uh, um, having this flawless cooperation with the IMF? Uh, you know, cooperation with the IMF is exchange of, uh, you know, we deliver reforms and IMF is remunerating us with uh, financial support. Uh, reform process is very complicated. One of the key reasons why we didn't fulfill uh, the program which was initially approved uh, due to gas prices, you know, uh, Population, Ukrainians, uh, they experience substantial currency shock, price shock. Uh, and uh, at some stage, the authorities decided they, they are enough. They already lost uh, a lot of support. And uh, they started thinking about political future. That was the reason why uh, the cooperation stopped. Uh, but on the year of election, I have decided that they are ready to stay uh, at the country because, uh, in general, our progress in, refor in reforms was huge. It was, we, we have never seen su such progress in reforms previously under any president, under any government. Right. And uh, they decided to, to make some, you know, positive signal for us. And they replaced this uh, for milder program. It was widely recognized that this program uh, for election year is quite very, very mild. Yeah, short term. Program. They were very, uh, you know, very simple requirements. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, we have implemented all of them. Uh, but the problem was that actually an unexpected uh, absolute total change of power. It was expectation that uh, Poroshenko will remain as a president and there will be... Uh, like they would just continue yeah. the existing cooperation. Groisman right. or some other team uh, very similar to, to, to Groisman team will be in place. Uh, but when the IMF realized that its total reload of authorities in Ukraine, it was impossible to... like to make a new installment and to sign an agreement. They uh, make an agreement with the government. They want to see people who will be implemented, so who are responsible for implementation of the program. Of course, so they needed some pause in order to see the, well, how this new government and new authorities will prove their agenda um, on the daily basis and work. But um, so we understand that now this is a challenge for uh, PM Hunchevruk to build this cooperation with the IMF. How do you um, evaluate his efforts uh, in this task? And that, I think, will be uh, the conclusion to this conversation because we are running out of time. I think they are doing well. Actually, as I mentioned, they have delivered a, a lot of uh, positive uh, steps. For instance, we have approved uh, budget 2020 with 2.1% uh, of GDP deficit. And uh, quite realistic revenues targets should be absolutely fine with the IMF. Uh, they have approved an unbundling of nafta gas. I mean, they delivered to the parliament and parliament approved. Uh, they have uh, made progress with land reform. It was in the list of, uh, of the IMF. Uh, so everything to, to please the fund that, and to show that we are moving in the right direction. What about problematic bank loans? Uh, problematic bank loans, uh, actually there is a great work in, in this direction, but again, the main problematic part of, of this is related to Privat Bank and to, to Kolomoisky. Mm -hmm. So again, this is the main stumbling block? It's, it's the main problem. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. That could be a conclusion to this conversation. I hope that the Ukrainian authorities can hear these anal analysis. And thank you so much for being a guest in the studio today. Thank you. That was Dmitry Boyarchuk, Executive Director at Case Ukraine. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Oles Karjuk. Goodbye.